So there I was minding my own business and all of a sudden, this guy hit my car. So now I have to take the car to a body shop and get it fixed, but I'm like, how am I gonna get to work? Because I don't have a rental car and they're gonna keep my car four or five days. Like my grandma used to say, it is what it is. Wait, she didn't say that. Then somebody at my job said, you know, this would be a perfect opportunity for you to explore alternative transportation methods. And I was like, wow, gee, thanks for that. That's very helpful. I never thought of that. This is only day one. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna drop my car off at the body shop, and then I'm gonna ride my bike to work on the Swamp Rabbit Trail. Like grandma always said, you gotta do what you gotta do. Wait, I don't think she said that either. Fender benders, am I right? So as it turns out, this body shop is literally steps off of the Swamp Rabbit Trail. Of course, a few things come into play when you're riding a bike to work. You wanna check the weather forecast, check the interwebs and find out what the weather's gonna do that day, dress accordingly. If it rains, you just gotta wear rain gear, you know what I'm saying? Or else you'll wind up arriving at work as soggy as a day-old bowl of Fruit Loops. It also helps a lot that I live literally just steps off of the Swamp Rabbit Trail. I am a recreational cyclist. I enjoy riding greenways, river walks, rail trails. And this is a rail trail. One awesome thing about the Swamp Rabbit Trail is that it's more of a straight shot and you don't have to stop for traffic lights. That makes a huge difference. You do, however, have to brake for squirrels now and then. Am I saying it's faster than driving? Not necessarily. I guess that depends on where you live and where you work. It takes me about 20 minutes to drive to work. It takes me 40 minutes to ride my bike. But during that 40 minutes, I get to be outside in nature and I'm pedaling. So I'm burning off the calories from that cake I had yesterday at my co-worker's birthday celebration. One thing I really enjoy about traveling outdoors and at this pace is that you see things. You see interesting things, cool things that you would never see from the road, especially an interstate highway. This gives new meaning to the phrase, catch me outside, how about that? Um, it just kind of hit me, just dawned on me that I don't have a car anymore. Well, I do, I just don't have access to it. It's a little disconcerting, to be honest. As the young people would say, it's giving me anxiety. For real. Hey, 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 she's in sight. Looks like we made it. So it's day two of my car is at the body shop and how am I gonna get to work? So I live steps away from the Swamp Rabbit Trail and also adjacent to Furman University. So I'm gonna ride my bike via the SRT, the Swamp Rabbit Trail for a short distance. And once I get to Furman, it's gonna be all about Greenlink, baby. So Greenlink has furnished me with this nice solar powered, whatever it is. I mean, it's not raining outside, but if it was, I would be dry. And here it comes now. Now it's just a matter of loading my bike on the front of the bus and then using my handy reloadable touch pass to pay the fare. Maybe you're thinking, fare? It costs money to ride a bus? Yeah, my ticket was a dollar and fifty cents. And some people are like, a dollar fifty, that's way too much. Stop the cap, 
and stop the cab. So for about the price of a honey bun at the drugstore, you can ride in climate controlled comfort, do whatever you want to do, and leave the driving to Greenlink. And I got to know our driver a little bit. His name is Angelo. His favorite color is blue. His favorite food is chicken. And his favorite place to vacation is North Myrtle Beach. Hey, watch this. This will be fun. Ready? Everybody, three, two, one. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round. Nobody? Yeah. Okay. From the Green Link transfer station to my workplace, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump, so I'm almost there. All right, day two is in the books. It was Greenlink day. Hey, what can I say? It was comfortable, it was affordable, and best of all, no road rage. six months until college football season. I, I can't wait. Hey, thanks for the ride. No problem. Well, there's plenty of rain in the forecast, so today might finally be that day when things get a little dicey for me. But hey, that's part of the deal. In a way, if I get rained on a little bit, that'll sort of just be part of the fun. Part of why I chose to do this, just to challenge myself. After all, if it was all gumdrops and lollipops the whole time, I mean, where's the fun in that? So y'all thought I was just out here clowning around. No. It just got real out here on the Swamp Rabbit Trail. But it's okay, you know? Because there's so much about riding a bike that takes you back to childhood. There's nothing kids love more than playing in mud puddles in the rain. Am I right? I'm right. Well, except maybe playing video games on an iPad, but... So what have I learned on this journey? Well, there are several different ways to get to work. Some of them have certain challenges. They all have built-in advantages. So, as my grandma used to say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Now, I understand the sentiment behind that saying and I understand how it applies to what I'm doing right now, but why was my grandma going around skinning cats? So it's over, right? You know that cute fun little experiment that I did for my day job. It's over, right? In the words of Coach Lee Corso, not so fast, my friends. I stopped in at the body shop after they had had the car, not four or five days, but eight days. I stopped in to, you know, say, what's up? And the guy told me that it was gonna be another three days, totaling, as you already know, 11 days without a car. So here I am, day 11. I just got the call that the car is ready and I'm headed that way to pick it up. And of course, suddenly it's raining. I've had a rain event only once so far in this entire journey. And now on my way to pick up the car from the body shop, it is definitely raining. Hopefully the bottom won't fall out before I can get there. Well, the rain scare turned out to be just that, a scare. 
It rained good for about three minutes. So now it's over, and what did we learn? Well, the positives, I've already kind of gone over the positives as part of the video series because, I mean, you know, the folks over at my day job, they wanted me in the videos to accentuate the positives and sort of ignore the negatives because all government messages are basically propaganda to some extent. Somebody at work said, so you're lying in these videos. I said, yes, actually. These videos sit on a throne of lies. No, I'm just kidding. It's not, I wasn't lying. I just, I didn't really talk that much about the negative factors because the purpose of the series was to promote mobility and alternate forms of transportation. To be honest, there were some negative things. Number one is just inconvenience. I mean, this is a no-brainer. This goes without saying, right? Unless you live in one of those little uh, nodes in an urban area where everything in your life is within walking distance, it's going to be very inconvenient to go without a car for 11 days. Not to mention the fact that, you know, some days I might be at work and it's, you know, five o'clock is getting close and I might say, you know, I'd like to go to Best Buy and just uh, do a little computer shopping. Nope. Uh, hey, I'd like to run by Culver's and get a concrete mixer. Nope. Not to mention the fact that you may not live on a rail trail or a greenway. And riding on roads is, that's a whole other thing. Number two, it turns out it gets dark outside at nighttime. Yes, I have lights on my bike, but there have been deer and even a bear spotted on the Swamp Rabbit Trail. And you know, I'm just not wanting to wrestle with a bear in the dark. I did not want to be on the trail after dark. So one day my daughter gave me a ride to work because I had to work at night. I had to work a baseball game that night. And look at her being a good daughter, giving dad a ride that day. So my son gave me a ride one day as part of the video series. My daughter gave me a ride another day. All of the rest of the time, it was all me and the bicycle. But I did not want to be on the Swamp Rabbit Trail after dark. So I would have to make sure that I left work with enough time to get home before dark. Adding one more thing to the list of things I had to keep up with or worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. Number three, and I faced this mostly in the evening, coming home from work, not going to work, the speedy cyclists in the Lycra, um, yeah, y'all are a problem. A trail like the Swamp Rabbit Trail, a rail trail, a greenway, a river walk, these are not the places for you to practice for the Tour de France or whatever it is that you're rehearsing for. I don't know, trying to increase your speed. You're bothering people walking their dogs. You're making guys like me feel like he's gonna get into a head-on collision just any minute. You're running into women pushing baby strollers for crying out loud. Y'all need to slow down. The last negative I would say is just the popularity of the Swamp Rabbit Trail. It's very crowded, especially on the ride home, very crowded. And so I would have to just have a lot of patience, which added to the amount of time it took for me to get home. But like I said, there were a lot of positives. Those were touched on earlier in the video. And mostly, I'm just glad I did it. I just wanted to say I did it. Even after I found out it was gonna be 11 days, the challenge of being able to go completely without a car and not call a rental car company. I did, uh, again, my daughter helped me one day, my son one day. The rest of the time, it was all me. And I'm glad I did it. It was fun. I challenged myself and I pulled it off. Yay! <laughs>